every summer, I spend anywhere from five, six, sometimes seven weeks in lower southeastern Louisiana. And I do this because I'm guiding clients. We're also shooting television, we're shooting promotional videos uh, for, for partner brands. But for the most part, I'm there with my clients to provide them an experience that they cannot get in the state of Florida. And that's world-class sight fishing. Yeah, this is a beautiful area and a little private ramp. Well, so how long have you been down here? I've been coming to Venice in this area for about 20 years, but I've been coming to fish with Ryan for about the last seven and a half years. Okay. And how'd you find Ryan? I found him through a mutual friend. Ryan used to tournament fish on the FLW Redfish series, and I think he was actually on the Redfish Cup as well back when we were running tournament circuits. This is such a remote zone. We'll be fishing places where we won't see other boats. And best yet. And, and in Venice to be able to do that or near? Yeah, yeah. Better? We'll be, at, be just because the nature of technical skiff fishing puts you in zones that the bay boats right. have a difficult time right. getting into. One of the, the cool things about Louisiana, and a lot of my clients are pretty impressed with, is my ability to negotiate the marsh and be able to run through it effortlessly. Because it looks like everything is so close. The problem is, it's, it's a maze. You can't go from point A to the plan B fishing spot in a straight line. You literally might have to take the long route through all kinds of of little channels and canals and coolies. It's, it's pretty extensive. Well, sight fishing as a rule has to be the most exciting style of fishing that I'm a part of as a fishing guide because it's not only the ability for me to see the fish, it's the ability for the person on the bow to be able to see the fish too and give them direction instruction so they recognize the fish. And then in this case, as, as a fly angler, Meredith would have to actually put the presentation in the right spot. So it's a lot different than light tackle fishing. You know, the, the different aspects of, of sight fishing really come down to, you have to see the fish, you have to recognize the orientation of the fish, and then you have to overcome some of the environment uh, as far as patient enough to let them get past a piece of grass where you can present a fly to them or allow for overcast skies to kind of clear up. There was lots of stalls in this episode where we would wait for better light right here at your, at your three, right there, perfect. Which, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, right there. You got it. So there are a lot of challenges, but the reward is huge when it comes to sight fishing because it's the one style of fishing that you get to see, present, and then actually see the eat. Everything from that point on, quite honestly, is pretty anticlimactic. Sight fishing is just for me, it's everything. That's what I pursue. Anywhere I go to fish, I want, I want to be able to see the fish before I cast at it. But for many, sight fishing is actually can make it a great challenge because you see the fish attack your fly and the first instinct you're going to have is to lift your rod, especially those coming from fresh water. So they're not feeling the fish hit as they're stripping and a lot of times if you don't see it hit and you just feel it, you're much better at doing keeping your rod tip low and you keep stripping. So I think that that's I think that's one of the biggest challenges that in my school um, for redfish, that's what I've got to talk about. This one looks like a gar. <laughs> a gar <laughs> took a chunk. <laughs> See, in, in that case, the false eye gives them the opportunity to actually get away. Yeah. Unlike the other guy. That came out so easy, spot. keeping constant tension on the fish. Well, I'm going to do you the honor so that you can release it. Okay. See that scar? It's a pretty significant scar. 
That's a massive spot. Poor guy. <laughs> but he, he got away. He got guard. To live one more day. And off right. he goes. Good job. Thank you. You're doing great. Good spot. <sighs> Let's do that about 15 more times Let's and do make it. it a great day. Let's do it. Right, there's a school of redfish here at your nine o'clock. Okay. You see them out there? They're three or four feet off the bank there. I don't. I have terrible Just vis. Throw, You're going to have to walk me through it. A little it. bit more. Yep. Right on that line. Right in there. Just work it out. See if you can stroke them. There's like three or four of them there. Okay. Throw a little Ooh. to the right on that line. Well, yeah, he's following there, it. He got, got it. it. You yeah. got it. There you got go. it. There were like three or four of them nice, there. Nice. Nice. They weren't big enough where they were making a big signature. Right, right. No, I couldn't see him at all. Uh, I just had that that flat light. Yeah. Ah, beauty. I mean, I think one of the things that's so great about CA is not only his voice, but how tall he is. This guy can see like an eagle. Yeah, a little taller polling platform this year. Making me feel a little bit older than I normally feel. <laughs> Oh, right in the button, right in the button. I mean, we both wear Smiths, so that definitely helps. We're being able to detect those fish further than I think a lot of lenses out there, but he knows where the fish are gonna be. He knows because he pays attention to tide. He knows the area and he knows redfish. From fishing out here with Ryan and a couple of the other guys that are from Louisiana, I mean, chartreuse is a huge color here. Loved it. Very representative of the size fish that you find in these small ponds. But don't let it surprise you because there are 40, 40 inch fish that oh, swim man. in these ponds as well. Let's get Rusty back in the pool. Thanks for playing, Mr. No Spot. One of the many challenges that I have every summer, whether I'm fishing in Florida or in Louisiana because the climate is so similar, is the fact that you gotta deal with thunderstorms. And the volatility of thunderstorms in Louisiana in August, it is crazy. You can count on them. They're gonna happen every day and they happen fast. And it seems like the cells just go from, that doesn't look too threatening, to holy cow, we need to fire up the oven route and get the heck out of here. <laughs> Meredith is a good friend and a very qualified angler. I met Meredith through the IGFA and the Bonefish Tarpon Trust, and then later on, we were both on board with Captains for Clean Water, uh, trying to lend our voices and lend our audiences to support uh, the need for clean water here in Florida. And Meredith is just one of those personalities that's undeniable. And when I thought that I might have the opportunity to do a fly show, she really came up on the list pretty high of who I wanted to fish with. Right there, stroke, stroke, stroke. You got oh, it. Oh, yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CA and I got to fish together last fall on a Smith Optics photo shoot and just immediately clicked. Uh, he's really calm on the boat. I need someone calm. I'm not always calm. And he, uh, he just knows where the fish live, so immediately, we clicked and I've been fishing with him since. This one's really nice and spotted. Five spotter. <laughs> that was a good one, CA, good eyes, truly. We're up to a lucky seven, I think, just about. I think so. There's lots of parts to the brand Meredith McCord. I know you do fishing schools. 
I know you chase world records. Right now, I'm doing several things. I'm hosting trips around the globe. On my social media, I was getting more and more followers that were females, and they were like, hey, do you do any girl-only trips? And I kind of rolled my eyes. But the more I kind of thought about it, I was like, you know what, maybe I should do this. It could be fun. And this past spring, I took a group of 11 women and myself down to Mexico to pursue permit, and my mind was blown. What they really wanted was an education. They wanted to learn how to fish, but in a kind of a safe environment. And they felt like being with just all women, they could ask the questions that they couldn't ask of their boyfriend, their husband, or maybe their dad. So one of the things I've been teaching in my classes with the ladies is the short cast. And so when I talk about the up-down, what, what I'm helping the girls to do, get their fly in the water quick, and then the up, down. And it's almost like you're hammering a nail. It's you're coming back, you're stopping, and then you come forward and let that weight come forward. It's a chop cast. And we're gonna play this little game I play with the okay. girls. Here we go. 10 feet, 10 o'clock, moving yeah. to the right. Ooh, ooh, gotta shorten that. Ooh, oh, there you go, you slid it in. <laughs> That's the hardest cast. The hardest cast is up and down trying to get it there you to go. turn over. That's that karate chop. Yep, that karate chop cast. I think you basically did this so that I would appreciate how hard it was for you to present to those fish today. <laughs> it's a lot easier for me to say, nope, you screwed that one up, let's go to the next one. You did a good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, right here. Got him? <laughs> <laughs> That's that, the one I've been done. That is a quick cast. That, that was is, a quick cast. And all what, it took was that little tink, tink, Yep. just moving the fly. Just giving it a little. Yeah. That's And sometimes for clients, that's the toughest thing. They put the cast where it has to be, but they can't give it life fast enough because they can't find the line. Yeah, and he's just waiting for it. You have to be able to manage the line and the casts have to be quick. And in some cases, choppy. They can't always be pretty where you're laying out that fly line and driving it out there and having time to move it across the path of the fish. Lots of times it's up, down, squiggle, pop. Ready? Yep. And lead Got him. It. Yay! Look how purple he is. Nice fish. That's a really good fish. He was just laid up. Give him a little, little root canal. You should call that little orange fly the Cheeto. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Comfort food. Cheetos are anti-inflammatories. Didn't know she knew that. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's a good representative fish in the pond. All right, we're gonna put this one back in the pond. Catch this one again. That's a beauty. All right. Adios. Back into nature. Love it. Back where he belongs. Thank you very much. Yeah, let's do that one again. Let's do it. Probably one of the biggest reasons I target Southeast Louisiana is just the the fact that the life there is greater than any other any other area I've ever fished. Every turn, every creek, bayou, trenas is absolutely loaded with life. Whether it be the target species or bait or ducks or herons, I mean it is eye candy to anyone that is in love with the environment. It is one of the most beautiful places when you're running through the marsh, the, all the rozo and, and all the aquatic plants that you see, you, you don't see color and vibrance and, and life like that any place in the lower 48 states. You just don't see it. So today's tackle segment is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more about optics. Because we covered so much in the boat today with Meredith, 
It didn't feel like there was anything more to cover other than the fact that we need to really let you know why we use Smith Optics. Now, this is a pair of sunglasses that I've had for over two years. And when I say that I've had them for over two years, that would probably be about five or six years use for anybody else. These are the low light igniter uh, lenses that Meredith was using on the show. And this is the guide's choice frame, which I most always pick black to, to suck up the light. They have a stainless steel spring hinge. My sunglasses hold up very, very well under lots of abuse. The fact that the low light igniter lens really fires up the fish where you can see them. Low light like dawn and dusk, thunderstorms. This gives you almost like it lights the water up and the fish almost seems superimposed with this particular lens. It has an anti-reflective coating on the outside of the lens, which also protects it a little bit from scratching. I like to keep both this lens and the one that you saw me wearing in the show, which is the brown polarized lens, uh, which gives me an awful lot of contrast during bright skies and it allows my eyes to relax a little bit. So that that's basically today's tackle talk is giving you a little insight on our sight fishing lens. Sight fishing, light tackle versus fly, there's some significant differences. One, when you're light tackle fishing, you don't have to be spot on or know exactly the way the fish is oriented because the lure itself acts as an attractor and it can call the fish to the lure. Much different, much different with fly fishing. You're throwing a silent, basically, bait to the fish and you have to provide the action and it has to be in the cone of sight of that fish. So you have to really get a lot closer, understand the orientation of the fish, and then be able to present and give that fly life for the fish to ever be fooled. I'm like, there he is. I knew that one was going to have to eat. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. This what is, are you going to do now? Huh? Yeah. He's in the highest end. The, the redfish is such a, a formidable predator in the marsh. Every, everything fears it. So you, you better be on guard. There we go. There Got him. Out. Oh, beauty. Look yeah, at the colors fish. on this one. I mean, a gorgeous fish. And they are so prolific in the way that they strike a bait or a fly. I think many of us think that because they're clumsy, that they don't have good visual acuity. Well, let me tell you, they have to have good visual acuity to eat a fly. Ah, yes. That is a pretty fish. Color. That is a pretty fish. Color change made it. Yeah. Still got denied though a few times. A few times. Trust me, when I tell you they have great visual acuity, they have great visual acuity. They they line up their target and they eat it. There are some skills being on the polling platform, trust me. It's just not about seeing and calling out shots. Lots of times it's about minimizing the noise of the boat, minimizing the pressure wave of the boat, and then turning the boat in such a fashion that it allows your, your fly caster to be able to carry the line over the water instead of being directly over the top of me, which in many cases, I forgot that Meredith was wrong-handed. I'm used to 90% of my folks being right-handed because she's wrong-handed, left-handed. I often instinctually would go the wrong way and then I'd be ducking, trying not to get a new earring. These two sheep's head right here. Yep, got him. Right in front of him. There, there yes, he is. yes he is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And that was your longest presentation. Yes, this is that I finally got a real You know real what, this is the in. best fish. So one of the things that we got to do is we pursued sheephead. And I've done this in Texas. We call them the Texas permit. Yes. Most difficult, I think, in the Gulf Coast fish to catch on fly is the sheephead. I mean, they love to follow. They love to nose down on your fly. But to actually eat it and take it in, that's a whole nother challenge. 
We might have should have had a, a class tippet on this because this might have been something that you would have been proud of to say, you know Absolutely. what? Absolutely. This could be close to a record on fly. Look at that, right on his nose, this, right on the butt. This one's going to be over six pounds for sure. Woohoo! Yes! In the net! There. <laughs> Holy big one! That's the biggest one I've ever caught. That's my personal best. That is a big one. Oh, look at his teeth! Oh! <laughs> that one even looks big when I'm holding it. Yeah! That thing is ginormous. Oh, thank you for eating. You've done a good job today, and I think a lot of, a lot of the audience, uh, they're going to be inspired to take up fly fishing and know what the possibilities are here in Louisiana. Oh! <laughs> you actually, that was might have been the longest presentation that you've had to make all day long and it produced the best fish. It did. One of the great things about being a professional guide is you're learning every day. Every day you're on the water, you're learning something new. You're learning more and more about the environment. You're learning more and more about the fish. You learn more about the anglers that you're spending time with and sharing uh, experiences with. And that's what really keeps me coming back out here to Louisiana, to Cajun Fishing Adventures, is all of that and the fact that I know I'm inspiring others to continue the passion, continue being invested in fishing, invested in the outdoors. <laughs>